For an estate that houses close to 45,000 people, water supply is bound to be a problem, and it has been. And you don't need to go far to make that discovery. During our tour of the area, water trucks and water vendors were spotted within the estate. A bit of water issues, yeah, at times. But those phase one, yeah, but phase four, phase five, it's a bit okay. But phase one, there's a bit issues of water, yeah. How often do you people receive water, maybe in this phase? Oh, in this phase, like three years or three or four times, it's okay, it's balanced. Just like most estates in Nairobi, water is a precious but scarce commodity. But unlike many areas within the capital, Nyayo Estate may have a solution to the problem. Like most homes in Nairobi, the residents of Nyayo Estate get their water from the Nairobi Water and Sewerage Company. The only difference is, is that here, the water first is accumulated at this particular point, which serves as the estate's main water reservoir. It is from here that water is then distributed to the various housing units that make up this particular estate. The underground water reservoir is touted as the biggest reinforced concrete reservoir by a private entity in the country. And there may be a reason for that bragging right. Up to 6 million litres of water can be stored here for distribution within the estate to the close to 5,000 housing units. And each unit is served by a 1,000 litre water tank. So when you do the maths, you find that at least we have catered for 5,000 units plus more. So that again, it's important to have reservoir. It's also important to cater for uh, leakages. The estate management has come up with an intricate mechanism of distributing water on its own through an internal rationing system entirely run by the managers in this room where each face within the estate receives water at least twice every week. This is where we now we dispute water from. We pump the, these are the pumps. You can see them here. And they also, we type, there are times where we work with one or two or three or four of them. When you have enough water, sometimes when there is good pressure, you may even use one or two. If we have enough water, it depends very well. For at least 30,000 residents. Oh, yeah. They will get those water. So, but now because we don't have water, enough water, that's why the rationing has to take place because we need to distribute equally to everybody. But because of the system water, when there is no enough pressure, you may find some areas still there is challenges of hairlock, all those kind of things. So now who does this work? For? We have a pumping pass for nudes this year. Oh. The system runs entirely through funding from the monthly contributions from the residents. Though not everyone receives as much water as they would like, the system has helped alleviate to some extent the water challenges within the estate. We have uh, zones. There is uh, one zone that receives water like today. Tomorrow the water is pumped to the other zone. We rarely miss water unless there is a crisis. Yeah. Is the water usually enough? <laughs> I think the only place where water is enough is in the oceans. And uh, that is enough for fish, not us. Yeah, uh, Nairobi, because of the rationing, because of the high number of uh, people that live here, we don't have enough water, but we distribute whatever we have equitably uh, amongst all the residents that we have. Yes. In addition to the reservoir, the estate also has six boreholes dug in each face of the estate to help complement the already limited water supply. Security checks here are mandatory and each homeowner is required to have a car sticker if their vehicle is to be allowed into the estate. <laughs> there are a total of 288 security officers who ensure the safety of residents within the entire Nyayo estate both day and night. This is uh, where anybody who wants to retire mm -hmm wants to live with, with the next door neighbor where there is uh, some noise next to door mm. where you can uh, even uh, forget uh, your door unlocked and uh, you can uh, still come back and it is still safe. It has happened to me. 
Mm. I thought Mama had locked. She also thought I had locked. We went away for the whole weekend, and uh, we came back only to realize we didn't lock. But uh, we were still safe, and uh, you nothing had been stolen. You cannot, you cannot carry a package out of that uh, court gate until it is inspected. The owner has to verify in writing that I have allowed that pair of shoes to go out for repair. Really? Yes. In your estate, at a new new major, you order security procedures just right from the gate. It's superb. It's just on point and it's it's like this every day, each and every day. Yeah. So you can't supposing even you have visitors from other estates at Wakikuja, it it really gives you morale. The estate is so well managed that it has since won two awards. The first came in October 2011 when the estate was awarded by the Community Development Network as the cleanest estate in Africa, having the best practice in ensuring a clean environment. We are so proud of it. The management is good. At least there's accountability. Yeah, right from the top down there, there's a good accountability. Yeah, we're really proud of that. Each resident is tasked with paying 2,500 Kenya shillings to the National Social Security Fund as a service charge which is used to pay for security personnel, road maintenance, installation of street lights, payment of garbage collection and many more. Why do you think the houses here are in so much demand? Why does everybody want to live in Nyawe estate? Number one, security. Two, greenness. Three, the mortgage of NSSF is, the, I think, is the most soft mortgage. Because when you pay the percentage, the 15% that they wanted, and you are able to be paying for 15 years, it, it was a very good kind of arrangement of the mortgage. The price of a house here ranges from anything between 7 million to 12 million shillings for a three-bedroom apartment. From the green open spaces to the well-trimmed fence hedges, Nyayo Estate is setting the gold standard for how strict adherence to rules and estate management could see the creation of a neighborhood fit to raise the next generation of Kenyans. Perhaps what lessons do you think we as a society can learn from how estates should be managed mm. based on how you people run Nyayo Estate? What critical key lessons mm. can we learn about our communities and our neighborhoods. I think the first and foremost lesson people can take from Nyayo is that systems work. When you put systems in place and you establish how these systems, these systems are run, uh, people need to appreciate that systems can run with good management. Yeah, That is how Nyayo has sustained its glory over the years. It is because it has systems that work, there are rules and people are firm about them. Uh, those of us in management, we are firm about uh, the enforcement of the rules. Nyayo is a very nice place, yeah, in terms of security, management, it's has a bit of organization. I can say it's a nice place to be. Do you think this is the best estate in Kenya? Uh, I still think it can do better, but in the meantime, eh? I have yet, you need to tell me whether there is another one that is better than this. If there is another arrangement, I have not had that experience. Despite all its accolades and prestige, some believe the success behind Nyayo Estate's legacy lies in the fact that its ownership is heavily involved in the day-to-day -day running of the activities of the estate. The estate I, in my estimation, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. is as good and as habitable as it is yeah. because it is still well maintained and managed by NSSF. Yeah. If NSSF was to withdraw from this place... I, 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 I don't want to comment that the people may think. <laughs> I'm just doing that because I want to keep my, my job. job. But let me be very clear and advise these people, the residents. When the NSSF steps out from this estate, 
I don't know whether you are know when we are under Buru Buru in East and everybody yes. was talking about Buru. Yes, I did an episode there. Today, that area, that estate was reduced like a slum. And I can assure you, we know people. The day NSSF steps out here, the difference which will be here, it will never be recovered. And if they can take my advice, if they can take my advice, the residents, particularly there was time they were saying they want to take this one, and even said, let's give them this one so that they can test. Because you cannot go knocking doors to every house asking people, bring money for security, bring money to pay power bills, bring money to pay water, bring... They can't. Timothy Otieno, KTN News.